What's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Tattoo Critiques. I'm Pony Lawson and I'm here to critique your tattoos. Today we're looking at some artist tattoos. We've got some really cool ones on deck and be sure to stick around to the very end where we talk about my favorite tattoo and my least favorite tattoo. Or as you know we like to call it, the toilet tattoo. So let's not waste any more time and roll that intro. As I said before, welcome back. If you guys are enjoying these videos, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. All right, let's get into it. Okay, first up, we've got a tattoo sent in by Noah Z. Noah Z, you sent in this Pokemon. Uh, I don't really want to guess his name, so let me check my Pokedex real quick. Got it. Okay, this is Mega Gengar. So now that we've figured it out that this is uh, Mega Gengar, I can critique your work from here. Okay, Noah, let's break this down a little bit. It seems like the colors you have used in here aren't super saturated and consistent, and it seems like a, a couple of these spots are just a little scratchy. It's not a smooth gradient where the purple meets the pink, and I think a way you can remedy that is just the way that you're holding your needle. It seems like you may have been holding your needle sideways, as opposed to holding it like a broom and giving it a nice sweeping motion. I think that would have given you a softer gradient as opposed to this very harsh, scratchy looking gradient that you have right now. And that same technique can be used throughout this entire tattoo because when I look up near the top uh, of the purple and things like that, it just doesn't seem like it's very well saturated. The line work that you have at the top right of this spike over here seems to be my favorite part. It's a very clean line. Unfortunately, those lines don't stay as clean throughout the entire tattoo. The right side seems to be a little cleaner than the left side. I think you could have used a bold older outline for that pink at the bottom as well. It just seems to be a bit thin, and when that heals up, it might not be very strong. I think it would have been nice to see a dark blue outline with a lighter blue on the inside of these clouds in the background, something that just has more of a contrast than this middle ground blue with a darker blue outline. It seems like you may just need to slow down a bit because when I look at the purples and the dark purples throughout this entire tattoo, it just seems like you may have rushed because everything is kind of coming out patchy. And what I mean by that is, if you were to look at these darker purples on the top left side of this thing, the purple's kind of just thrown in there. It doesn't seem like there's any real home for that or any real place for that purple to live, and that can be said about many places in this tattoo. There's just no real sense of, of direction for a lot of it, and I think a lot of that can be fixed or remedied uh, by slowing down, keeping a very consistent movement with your needle. You know, don't move the needle around different directions. Keep the same direction as you're shading. If you're up on one of these spikes and the purple is coming down at this angle, you want to push away from that angle. You don't want to start shading this way and then shading this way, otherwise you're going to end up with a really patchy looking tattoo and that's kind of what this looks like right now. This has potential to be very good, but as it sits, it's just, I think you need to work on, on your color blending and getting very smooth shades out of this because this is happening everywhere. When you look in the eye of this Pokemon as well, it just seems, again, like the yellows and oranges are thrown in there and there's no really plan for them, right? If you were to have brought a little bit of darker orange or brown even into this eye, very slowly and, and controlled and then blended from the brown uh, with that orange and then put the yellow on top of that everywhere it needs to be in a nice controlled fashion, I think that eye would have popped, or or these eyes would have popped. And again, just using that same technique throughout this entire tattoo, uh, you know, make sure you start off with your base colors first, get your dark purples in there right where they need to be. Don't rush through this. There's no reason to speed through these things, okay? Take all the time you need. The one good thing about those blue clouds in the back is those seem to be the most saturated thing out of this entire tattoo. However you did those blues in the background, maybe just bring that same technique into the purples in this Pokemon, because whatever you did with those in the background seemed to be working a lot better. Thank you, Noah. I appreciate you. Okay, the next one is sent in by Roy. Roy, you sent in this rose that you said you used a three-round liner for this entire thing. And I'm usually a huge fan of using three-round liners, especially if you can complete the entire tattoo with that. You can do a lot of line work, you can do a lot of stippling, you can do a lot of shading. So the three round is a, a pretty versatile needle choice when doing a lot of realism and especially when it comes to smaller tattoos and things like that. The first thing I noticed about this rose is the top left, that's kind of where my eyes get dragged to and I would say that's just because of lack of lines or lack of dark shading up in the top left. The bottom right side of this rose seems to be the more powerful side. The top left just kind of seems to be a bit soft and um, some attention just needs to be brought up into those top left petals. I think it would have been nice had you used a little bit of a liner on that left side petal and then just a little bit of that dark shading is kind of fanning out from that as you did on the entire right 
right side of this tattoo. I'm not a huge fan of the way that these leaves taper off into little points at the end. I think they could have been cut just a little bit short and I feel like the leaves look a little wonky. You could have ran those lines through all the way. It seems like those lines were cut just a bit short and you rushed through those because none of those lines feel very consistent or the same as the ones next to them. The leaves on the entire left side and the top don't have that very thin ending. They've got a little bit shorter. So it, it honestly seems like two different artists made this tattoo. One artist worked on the right side while somebody else worked on the left side uh, because there are many different things with this tattoo. The leaves, the petals. I don't know if you just got tired near the end of this tattoo and things started to rush, but uh, it seems like a lot is incomplete on the left side where you paid a lot more attention to the things on the right. The shadows underneath the leaves I think would have been a little bit nicer had you used a mag as opposed to this liner. And I only say that because you're using the same kind of shading in the rose petals. So if you would have used a mag shader or something different for the shadows of the leaves and the shadows of the petals, it would have helped bring that petal forward a little bit more closer to your eye. Overall, I think my main gripe about this tattoo is just the top left side where it seems to just kind of fall off. Adding some more time and attention, uh, line work, and a little darker shade to the top left of this tattoo would just help it pop that much more. So thank you, Roy, for sending that in. I appreciate it. These next few tattoos were sent in by Dutch Tats. Um, I honestly don't know where to begin. I know some people are going to roast you in the comments below. You have to expect it. Uh, but my job here uh, is to help you grow as an artist. So my honest opinion would be to Maybe go back to your foundations, go back to square one and start doing palm size tattoos or smaller. I do think it is very valuable to you to have somebody critique your work and not just blow smoke up your ass, right? Maybe start doing tattoos that are only line work and only black because right now when I'm looking through these that you sent me, it feels like you're biting off more than you can chew. Thank you Dutch for sending these in. Keep practicing and make sure you focus in on like palm tattoos and smaller. Focus on only black tattoos, things like that. I honestly think that's gonna help further your tattoos. Thanks again. The next tattoo sent in is from Brian Senor Pita. Brian sent in this little cowgirl, and it's very small. I love the size of this thing. And I do appreciate you sending over a healed photo as well as a fresh photo so we can take a look at how everything's settled in. You've got some very nice shades throughout this entire tattoo. I feel like you really know what you're doing with a needle. When it comes to the hair and things like that, it really looks controlled. I think my favorite part throughout this entire tattoo is the shading. I think my least favorite parts are the tiny details. I think the nose just looks a hair too big. I think the lips could use a little work. And the same thing goes for the eyes. However, these are very, 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 very small. When you look at the healed photo, you can tell exactly how small these are. So I'm nitpicking here because I do think this is a great tattoo overall. I like the shape that you decided to enter with, with the triangular looking shape at the bottom. Uh, it's nice, you know, it's got a little bit of creativeness to it, and I like the two little birds around it. I do think the birds could use a little bit of work, uh, but again, the concept, the composition, and execution overall are very well done. A couple things that I do want to point out that could use some work, uh, one being the hand at the bottom. Uh, it just feels like you kind of lost a little bit of control there. Um, the shading that runs up on the side of her cheek right there also kind of seems like you lost a little bit of control, maybe slow down a bit to help aid that. It's, it's just tiny little things like that throughout that I'd say if maybe you slow down just a little bit more to focus on those details that this would have been a, a complete home run. He sent in another one, a couple animal heads in a similar triangular shape, and I like this one a lot too. I do feel like this one's a little filtered out, so I can't exactly judge it when it comes to like the skin tones and the redness and things like that, uh, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But I do like the textures and fine hairs and things like that that you have running throughout this entire tattoo. I think this is an exceptional tattoo, I just wish it weren't so filtered so I can kind of see it a bit more clearly. Thanks Brian. Dope tattoos, man. These next tattoos were sent in by Katie Hancock. And Katie, you mentioned for me to be brutally honest as you want to learn as much as you can and want to improve and be the best you possibly can be. I do love when artists tell me to be brutally honest because it just shows me that you want to learn and not just be showcased on a YouTube video. The first one you sent in is this horse that I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on because I think it's a pretty good tattoo overall. I think it's the angle of the photo that makes the top part of this horse look a lot bigger than his legs because his legs look a little short, right? From looking at this tattoo and your other tattoo, I would say the main thing you need to work on is taking a good photo and getting rid of those glares and things like that because uh, when you're trying to fight a glare in your tattoo photo like this, you're gonna end up with an odd angle, which is exactly what happened here. So maybe something like this you could have wiped entirely clean, make sure there is nothing for a light to bounce off of, and using a CPL filter can actually negate the glare from your photos. So maybe pick one of those up on Amazon for like 10 bucks. Aside from this tattoo, and nobody really wants to see like the sodas and fridge and BS that you have in the back of this tattoo. That being said, 
said, I think you should be taking your photos in front of a, a nice black curtain or something like that. Or if you have access to a DSLR or something with a nice lens that has a low f-stop, uh, using that can actually be very beneficial because it would blur out everything in the background and we wouldn't be distracted by those things. Okay, now let's talk about the tattoo. So right away, I feel like this Cheshire cat kind of just falls flat with the background because the same purples are being used. One way to help the cat stand above the space in the background is possibly by using darks or blacks in the space and maybe even using a different purple altogether. Not only will it separate the cat from the background, but it will make those purples and the pinks that are in the cat pop that much more. From the get, I wish you would have made this cat and hat a whole lot bigger, take up more room on the arm, and then just use the space where you need it. I feel like most of this tattoo is space, and then you've got a little bit of cat and a little bit of hat in here. The main piece of this is the cat and the hat and the clock and the banner. Fill up the entire arm with that subject matter and then put the space in. Had you have made that bigger and then just used the space as a little bit of background, I think you would have had a lot more room to play with colors. You know, for instance, inside the clock and inside the eyes and things like that, it would have been nice to see some oranges, some browns, and just some variation of color just to help give it some more, you know, pop and, and just to be more fun. But since it's so small, there's not that much room to do that. So again, I, th I think my number one gripe is just the size of this. I would have made the cat and the hat a lot bigger and then just use this space for a little bit of background. Thanks, Katie. I appreciate you. The next one sent in is from Matthew Edge. Matthew sent in this anime tattoo. It's very colorful and vibrant. Y'all know how much I know about my anime. <laughs> what is in the hair? Is that lotion? <laughs> oh, it's something about Mary tattoo. Matthew, I do enjoy looking at this tattoo. I enjoy the colors you used and the color palette. I enjoy the bright greens and the way they work with the dark greens. There are a few things that I would work on when it comes to design and composition. For the most part, you have a good structure, but there are a few things that get a little messy or a little wonky here and there. So I am unfamiliar with this character, so if I point out something that is accurate to the character, I apologize. These are things that I see as far as the tattoo goes. Let's start from the top. The greens that you use for those little leaves that are on the hair, I think could have been a bit different just to show it isn't hair, but it's actually leaves. The line of her right side of the cheek and the line on the hand are just floating too much to where it kind of just seems to get lost in that area. Her right shoulder as well kind of just seems to get lost in the neck zone. And her wrist as well also kind of gets lost. Kind of looks like that bracelet's cutting off some circulation. The eyes do look like they're going two different ways. Seems like the right eye is looking straight forward where her left eye is kind of looking up and away. I just don't quite understand the uh, hash marks that are going over her nose. I know sometimes that those marks can help give shape and things like that. I just don't quite understand those marks and how they lead upon her cheek. I think you've got the color saturation down quite well. I do think you could benefit from working on your line work a bit more. So to reiterate, at first glance, I do think this is a very cool looking tattoo. I like the vibrance and I like the greens and stuff like that. There are just a few parts in there where the lines may not connect all the way and things like that. Just, it just gives the appearance of it being a little blurry in some spots uh, where it shouldn't be. So again, maybe just focus on uh, some line work and adding some complementary colors to help differentiate things uh, running throughout this tattoo. But uh, keep up the great work, Matthew, I appreciate you. So that's gonna wrap it up for this week's tattoos. But before we go, you know we gotta talk about my favorite tattoo as well as my least favorite tattoo. Or as you know I like to call it, the... And this week's winner was sent in by Brian Senor Pita, and Brian sent in this little black and gray cowgirl. Brian, there are a few reasons why I picked your tattoo as my favorite this week, and I think the main one is just being that you know how to control a needle. I love these shades, I love the light that you have throughout this entire thing, and it healed great. For the most part, this is an exceptional job. And I know y'all probably think I'm being biased because it's a micro portrait, but compared to all the other tattoos that we saw this week, this one just is a step above. So I appreciate you sending that in, Brian. Keep up the good work. And this week's toilet tattoo is... Do I really have to say it? Dutch, I'm sorry. You're this week's winner of the coveted toilet tattoo. Do better. So once again, I wanna thank everybody for sending in your tattoos. If you'd like yours to be critiqued, send them into ponycritiques at gmail.com. And don't forget to subscribe, like, share these videos with your friends, and more importantly, hit that notification bell so you can be notified when we put up another video. Real quick before we go, I wanted to show you guys this tattoo that I saw last week that I thought was so freaking cool. It's by this tattooer named Black Minimal. She's from Hungary. I've been following her for about a year, but man, check this out. Unreal. There are so many reasons why I like this tattoo. It really caught me by surprise. Uh, the challenge that it must have been to do this tattoo in negative, the technical application, how the hairline turns into what it does when you turn it negative just blows my mind. The little dots and things like that. Great work, Black Minimal. So make sure you guys go check out her stuff. Give her a follow. I just want to try and put a spotlight on tattooers that you guys might not be aware of. All right, for real, see you guys later. <laughs>